Hello. Thank you all for coming. I didn't expect anybody be, to be here, but look at that standing room only. So I guess this talk has to be good. No pressure now, huh? All right. So my talk is called Save the World, the Girl, or Your Soul, Non-Standard Conflicts in Game Narratives. Uh, I've been told to give you my Twitter handle, so it's there it is, Grindislav Games. It'll come up again at the end of the talk. Uh, so brief bio, who am I? Uh, I am... Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> what happened there? Just yeah, I don't know. That, that the text is gone. Well, anyway, uh, I uh, basically, like uh, Matt said, I make adventure games. I make point-and-click adventure games. Um, I've been making them since about 2001 with Adventure Game Studio. Uh, made a freeware series called Ben Jordan Paranormal Eye Games, apparently. <laughs> Uh, no, Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator, that's kind of what I'm best known for in the indie freeware scene. Uh, and I just had my first commercial release last October, a game called The Golden Wake, which I'll be talking a little bit about in a very self-indulgent way. Uh, but I recently was hired by Wadget Eye Games as a full-time designer here in New York, so that's what I do now. So, starting off this talk, let's take a trip back to high school English and talk about narrative conflict. What is narrative conflict? So uh, the textbook Wikipedia definition of narrative conflict is an inherent in incompatibility between two or more characters or forces which creates tension. In other words, it's the basic plot of any story. So there's different types of narrative conflict. Usually they're narrowed down to four basic ones, the most popular ones, which I have changed to be a little bit more inclusive, gender neutral. We have human versus human which is the hero versus villain story, which is pretty much every story ever. I mean, like 95% or more of all conflict in stories is someone fighting against someone else. Uh, the second most popular one is human versus, or uh, actually, well, no, human versus nature. There's also the external struggle against the force of, of nature, for example, in The Old Man in the Sea, where the story basically is about a guy who goes out fishing and has problems dealing with a marlin and sharks and it's basically just him dealing with nature. We also have human versus society which is another popular one which is where the protagonist takes on an institution created by humans for example 1984 or any other story where you have someone taking on some sort of global conspiracy or just society, some facet of society. And then we have human versus self, which is the internal struggle, for example, in Requiem for a Dream, where it's basically the characters are dealing with their struggles with addiction and their own personal problems. This is the one I'm going to focus on most in this talk, because human versus nature is not really seen in games either that much, but I feel it's a little bit more difficult to make interesting games about human versus nature. That could be another talk, but I'm going to focus on human versus self for this one. So. What about narrative conflict in games? Like I said, most narrative focused games are either human versus human or human versus society. I mean, think about, think of five video games off the top of your head that are narrative based and chances are it's either you're trying to take on a villain who's doing something or you're trying to take on a, a evil government or a global conspiracy or some sort of societal thing. Uh, you either have to defeat the villain, save the love interest, or take down the global conspiracy, sometimes both. So, are there any games that feature human versus self? Yes, there are. And I'm going to give three examples. One is Planescape Torment. Another is Silent Hill 2. And third, self-indulgent, A Golden Wake, my game. So, uh, just as by a show of hands, how many people here have played Planescape Torment? Excellent. How many people have not? Wow. You should all play Planescape Torment. Uh, how about Silent Hill 2? Who's played Silent Hill 2? Okay, more people have played Silent Hill 2. How many people have played A Golden Wake? Yes! Thank you! All right, that, that was... All right. So, uh, so in Planescape Torment, the entire game... It's a very interesting game because I only recently played it myself. Um, it's an RPG game. It's in the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons universe, so you have things like chaotic good and alignment and chaotic evil, lawful good, all that stuff that doesn't make any sense to me. But um, So th what's interesting about this game is that even though it's an RPG, and usually in RPGs, you know, you have to save the kingdom, rescue the princess, etc. In this game, you're a character called the Nameless One, 
And the whole point of the game is you're trying to figure out your past and your identity. You meet previous versions of yourself, or you read documents written by previous versions of yourself. And ultimately, you fight against a representation of your soul. Not to spoil it, but that guy, that green guy over there, is a character called the Transcendent One, who is essentially your soul. Um, and it's really interesting because it subverts the idea of the role-playing game. It's you yourself are playing this role, but you're also dealing with who you are as this character versus who you were. You meet other characters who have met past versions of yourself and some past versions of yourself. Oh, another thing is uh, the nameless one is immortal. And so he can't truly die. And every time he dies, he loses his memory. So he doesn't remember any of his previous versions uh, or his previous incarnations, sorry. And when you meet other characters, you might meet someone to whom he was a real jerk. He, you meet someone who he, uh, who he was in love with, who he doesn't remember. It's really just that balance of trying to see. And, and as you play him, you can either be a jerk again, or you can try and atone for your sins. And ultimately, it's about him trying to figure out what he did, how to write it, if you so choose. But the struggle is all about his character and himself which is what makes that particular game interesting and probably the best case of human versus self in any narrative-based game that I've seen. Now, Silent Hill 2 is interesting because it's the only Silent Hill game that I've played. I don't know if any of the others play to this theme as well. But it's interesting because you're this guy and you get a letter from your wife saying, meet me in Silent Hill, and his wife has been dead for three years. So he's thinking, well, why, what? So he's walking around Silent Hill, which is a scary, fog-shrouded town, fighting monsters and everything, meeting these weird people. And the more you play the game, you, the more you realize that this is essentially just a manifestation of his own guilty conscience, because he feels guilty and he feels involved in his wife's death. So all these monsters he's fighting, uh, there's the infamous pyramid head that comes from this game is just they're just representations of the guilt that he feels and if you don't believe me there's a screenshot of him looking into the mirror so that obviously means that this is a man versus himself story because you know um, but no seriously it's it yeah it just and you meet the other characters and you kind of see that the town itself the idea is that the town itself feeds off of people's inner turmoil and kind of presents itself to them they see how they feel inside so he encounters these monsters and stuff and other characters are like well what monsters you know i see something different so that's another interesting example interesting example of how to uh, deal with that in a game and in the golden wake again another screenshot of the character looking at himself in the mirror because you know you have to um a real estate agent tries to make it big but winds up letting his greed drive him to his own downfall so this game i made this with the challenge in mind it's historical fiction it's set in a real world location at, during the 1920s and it's based on historical fact and i really wanted to get this sense of place and time and be faithful to the historical context but i also wanted to make an interesting story so i figured if it's about a real estate agent what kind of struggle would he have? I mean, there could be an evil real estate agent or something that, that could be trying to, to, uh, to lead to his downfall or whatever. But I thought it would be more interesting if we deal with his conscience, you know, his sense of right and wrong in this sort of environment where he's being pressured by the idea of greed and the idea of, you know, glamour and how he deals with that. So essentially it became a rise and fall story which, as far as I know, I mean, aside from these other games, you don't really see too much in narrative games, especially in adventure games. So that's why I went with that. Now, other games, they're, um, they have elements of human versus self, but they're not entirely about it. For example, Catherine is about a guy who sort of starts seeing this. He's in a committed relationship, and he starts with a woman named Catherine. He starts seeing this other woman with uh, Catherine with a K, or it's backwards. One, one's with a C, one's with a K. And they're essentially this kind of opposite personalities to each other. And so during the day, he kind of goes to this bar and hangs out and talks to his friends. And at night, he dreams, and his subconscious makes him climb up blocks and see falling sheep and all sorts of weird stuff. 
So there's this sort of inner struggle where he's trying to decide between which woman he wants to be with, but ultimately it's revealed that the whole plot is being controlled by the bartender, so it's really a man versus man or human versus human story. Um, in Condemned 2, you play as an alcoholic detective whose alcoholism manifests, manifests itself as a physical presence that he has to fight. But again, it also ends up being a human versus human story. But it does have that interesting element of him dealing with his own negative personality. And Max Payne, of course, is a human versus human story. Max Payne's whole thing is his wife and kid get murdered, and so he goes on a shooting spree across New York and you know tries to deal with the bad guys. But there are some levels where he's reliving the day that his wife and child got shot, and he feels guilty as well. So he's kind of going through his subconscious and and dealing with that. Um, so that is another element of human versus self that appears in that game. So the question is, why aren't there more? Character studies and human versus self stories are often seen in films and in literature. So why not in games? Is it really so difficult to weave interesting gameplay into a human versus self story? I don't think it is. Because as we've seen, you know, you have these stories that aren't specifically about it but they have elements of it, and it still makes for compelling gameplay. You could have a whole game. Imagine a game like Psychonauts, if you guys have played Psychonauts. You spend the whole game going to other people's minds and sorting out their emotional baggage and their problems and everything. If there was a game like that where you could go inside your own mind and deal with your own things, that could be an interesting thing to see. Um, you, we've seen it in, in platformers, we've seen it in, in RPGs, we've seen it in adventure games. It's really not so difficult to put that into a game. And what sort of games can lend themselves easily to human versus self stories? Again, RPGs, adventure games, any narrative game. It doesn't even really need to be uh, necessarily uh, just an adventure or an RPG. I mean, you could put put the elements into anything else. I mean, we could have we could have first person shooters where the person thinks about some sort of a first person shooter for example maybe someone dealing with PTSD and they have to struggle with their inner conflict uh, the guilt that they feel something like that that could be something that that uh, could be interestingly or interesting to explore so that leads us to what can we do how can we focus more on putting human versus self into our games if we design our games uh, well we focus more on making a character's inner conflict the main drive of the story, and we make it interesting. Uh, we remember we have to remember that not every story needs to be about a global conspiracy or a big bad. You know, it's a, it's it's a tired trope. Um, let's do a little audience participation experiment. Let's do uh, some word association type thing, and let's just name a narrative video game off the top of your head. Go, somebody. Okay. Bioshock, Indigo Prophecy, and Metal Gear. Persona 4, okay. Bioshock, man versus man. You're ultimately dealing with against Andrew Ryan. Uh, Indigo Prophecy also becomes man versus man, or man versus society, because you've got those creepy Mayan people. Uh, Persona 4, I haven't played Persona 4, but maybe you can enlighten me. Who are, Who is the ultimate... Uh, person you're fighting against, or thing you're fighting against in Persona 4. I, I don't know if I should say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if we're in, going into spoiler territory, but... Um, um, it, <laughs> well, the, the thing about it is it, it's a game, if you play any of the Persona series... I have not, unfortunately. It's, it's kind of about um, making connections with other people. Okay. Uh, you know, that's kind of how you get more powerful, is by making connections. And the whole time you're fighting these shadows that are kind of... Uh, kind of put on the world by a natural process, but it is sort of a manifestation in the end of a human. Okay. It turns out to be a god, so I don't know if that's nature or... Okay, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that, that I guess would be, I think there's a separate trope for, uh, or um, conflict for man versus god, um, but yeah, that, that kind of, yeah, there is, there is man versus god. Um, also, I 
should mention that Silent Hill 2, depending on what ending you get, it could also be a man versus nature, man versus dog, but that's not necessarily <laughs> considered the canon ending, so, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just it just proves my point. There's, it's an easy trap to fall in, not trap, but it's an easy story to go with. It's an, It's easy to just make your story about a bad guy or bad guys or bad thing and uh, just go with that. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it needs to be done. I think it would, games would benefit from more internal conflict and uh, more just human versus self. But of course, it's much easier said than done. And uh, with that, I say thanks for your time. And uh, you can check out my Twitter and my email. And we have some extra time for questions.